Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 54. Please turn to it, page number 54, and today is our lesson number 3. Before we, before we deal with the problems that you see on page number 54, let me pick up from where we left off yesterday. Yesterday we were talking about the importance of knowing one's squares. You must know your squares 1 through 20. We went through all of them yesterday. And yesterday where we stopped was the fact that these three quantities, knowing them by heart, the approximate value of root 2, root 3, and root 5, comes in quite handy. Let's begin with root, three, shall, root 2, shall we? What does root 2 equal to? Like, like we said yesterday, approximating the values of these three quantities has to do with knowing your squares. For example, root 2, root 2 here, can be written as square root of 2.00, of course, 2.00 is 2. And we find that, we found out yesterday, right here, where is it, right here, we found yesterday that 14 squared, 14 times 14, 4 times 4 is 16, 6 carry 1, 4, one, uh, four and 1, 5, and then we get 14. As you can see, it is 196. Now keep, off, keep listening. And therefore, if, if 14 times 14, if, if we knew by heart, if you knew your 14 squared, if we knew that 14 squared is 196, then all we have to realize is that if 14 squared is 196, then it stands to reason that 1.4 times 1.4 since there are one decimal place here and one decimal place here we take our decimal place and move two places must equal 1.96 what we find now what we just found out what we just found out is that the square root of what we just demonstrated was that the square root of 1.96 is exactly 1.4 is exactly 1.4. That's what we demonstrated here. Because we just stick a decimal point here, decimal point here, one decimal place, one, two decimal place, we move it two places. And therefore, and therefore, this is how we write therefore, this, this symbol here that you see there, that means therefore, therefore, the square root of 2, if the if square root of, if, if the square root of 1.96 is exactly 1.4, then that stands to reason that square root of 2, therefore, must be approximately 1.4. And nobody's going to argue with that. And that's, as you can see there, that comes directly from knowing the fact that square of 14 is one point, uh, square of 14 is 196. Let's find out square of 3, shall we? Square of 3 is going to be a little bit, little bit tricky. Again, square root of 3, not square of 3, rather, square root of 3 is same as square root of 3.00, of course. In other words, we are looking for something that close to 300, that comes close to 300. Let's do it here, shall we? Square root of 3.00. We are looking for something that close, comes close to 300. Yesterday we found out that 16 squared is 256. 256 is too far away from 300. We want something close to 300. Let's find out 17 squared, shall we? Let's find out 17 squared. 17 times 17. This is the only place where you need to know the 17 square. Other than that, it does not appear where, uh, as a square, the quantity itself in the exam, anywhere else. Just knowing the square root of 3, it comes in handy. 17 times 17, 7 times 7 is 49. 9, carry 4. Carry 4 and 7 ones are 7, plus 4 is going to be 11. And 17 times 1 is going to be 17. What do we see? What do you notice? What we notice is that what we notice is that if if 17 times 17 is 289, which it is, which means which tells us that square which which, which means if 17 times 17 is 29, that means that 1.7 times 1.7 must equal 2.89. Let me put it in a black marker because this, this one is difficult to see. 1.7 times 
times 1.7 must equal 2.89 because we take our decimal and we move two places which means the square root of 2.89 2.89 is exactly equal to 1.7 that's an exact quantity and therefore the square root of 3 is approximately 1.7 Let's move on to the last one. Square root of 5 this is the last one we talked about, which has to do with 500. I need the room, obviously. We need to get rid of it. Just give me one second, please. Square root of 5, which is, we're looking for something close to 500. Now yesterday we also learned the square root of square of 200, the square of 20 rather, is 400. We want something close to 500. Let's try 21, shall we? 21 times 21. 1 times 21 is just 21. And then 21 times 2 is going to be 2 and 4. We get 1, 4, 441. Well, 441, in my opinion, actually is too far away from 500. Let's try 22, shall we? Let's try 22. 22 times 22. It's very straightforward. It's just 44 and then another 44. And what we get is 4, 8, 4. There we go. Now, as we can clearly see, that if, if 22 times 22 is 484, which it is, then it stands to reason that 2.2 times 2.2 must equal, we take our decimal and move two places, 4.84, which tells us, which tells us the square root of 4.84 is exactly 2.2. It's exactly 2.2, therefore it's okay to say that the square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. That's it, we're done. So we learned three quantities today. Square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. We also learned that square root of 3 is approximately 1.7. And we also learned that square root of 2 is approximately 1.4. Knowing these three quantities comes in, as I said, quite handy. And we were not appreciate we are not able to appreciate the 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 value of these three quantities at this point in our story. But as we go further along in the book, as we start doing some more complicated problem, you will see that. It does come in handy. Let's do the next two problems. Actually, the problems that we are actually supposed to do, which on page number 54. We are done with all of this thing. We are going to move on to the two problems that we see on page 54. I need the room, obviously. On page 54, Problem number one, we are told, page 54, we are told that income, total income is 637, 312, and total expenses we are told are 248, 165. And they are looking for, I suppose, the profit that the company made, which is simply the difference of the two quantities. And all they want to see here, as I keep, as I keep reminding you, is to, is to uh, 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 all they want to see here is that you are able to concentrate. That's all. Of course, you know how to subtract numbers. But these days, of course, everybody is so dependent on the calculators that sometimes when we have to do things manually, we lose patience. We cannot do that in the exam. You have to be patient. You cannot get annoyed. You must take your time. You must do it properly, and you must do it efficiently. Those are the two characteristics that that, that are that are that are required in the exam. Accuracy and speed. One without the other is no good. Which is why we must practice all the problems in the books. The more problems you do, the more comfortable you will be in the exam. Just enough of the, enough of the sermon. Amen. 12 minus, we're going to have to borrow one. 12 minus 5, I'm not going to show all the baby steps. 12 minus 5 is 7. This, this became 0. Borrow 1 becomes 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. This became 2. Borrow, uh, that's the 2 minus 1 is 1. You can borrow the so subtract 8 from the 7, so you borrow 1. 17 minus 8, 16 minus 8 would have been 8. 17 minus 8 is going to be 9. And 12 minus 4 
12 minus 4 is going to be 8, and this 6 became 5, and 5 minus 2 is 3. I get 389,147. That is the answer. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? That was it. That was number 1. That was number 1. Second problem. In the diagram above, the distance from A to B is 3. All right, A to B is 30. So here's our distance A to B. This is our A. This is our B. And this distance, we are told, is 30. We also told that this somewhere here is C and somewhere here is D. What else are we told? A distance from A to B is 30 and the distance from A to C is the distance between A to B divided by 3. Oh geez. Distance, let me write it down so that actually we can understand the uh, language. It says distance between distance from A to C is the distance from A to B divided by 3. Now we're going to write this thing in equation so we can see it. Okay? Don't get bogged down in the language. Distance from A to C. So they're saying A to C. A to C. This is A to C is is means equals. Is means equal. Is the distance from A to B. A to B divided by three. That's all they're saying. And A to B we know is thirty. A to B we are told is thirty. If it's thirty, then A to C is thirty divided by three, which is ten. A to C is 10. We just found out that A to C is 10. Well, if A to C is 10, then C to B must be the remaining part, which is 30 minus 10, which is 20. That's all. We're done. Let's see, what do we have tomorrow? Ah, tomorrow we start on a new topic, which, which has to do with addition and subtraction of fractions and mixed numbers. I'll see you then, okay? Bye now.